Hello everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from the home shop today. Today we're going to be talking about the workhorse of the air brake system. It's going to be the brake chamber. The brake chamber is where we're going to take our air pressure and turn it back into mechanical energy. We do this a couple different ways inside here, but our biggest way we're going to be doing it is we have a little rubber diaphragm in there. This diaphragm is in the front part of the brake chamber here. When we push on our brake pedal, air is supplied to one side of this diaphragm, pushing it out. This is where we get our multiplication of force. We have 100 PSI in our air brake system here. This rubber diaphragm right here, this one is a type 30, so that means it's 30 square inches. So if we multiply our 100 by 30, we get 3,000 foot-pounds of power being pushed out on this. So that's a lot of force. We just take our 100 PSI, you know, up to 135 PSI, but most of the activation pressures are going to be between 80 and 100 PSI. Pushing out on this disc right here, we're going to be pushing out a rod inside here. We'll see in a minute when we tear one apart how it's actually working. We have two different types of brake chambers. One is just a simple service brake chamber. This is going to be found more on steer axles and drop axles that are steerable. So what this one is, it just has that diaphragm in one part there. This is only activated when we step on our brake pedal. Air goes into here, pushing out this rod. I can show you here. We'll unhook our hose from that one. We'll hook into this here. Now when I step on the brake pedal, air is just going to come from our brake pedal. Up, push on the little diaphragm inside here. It'll push this rod out. That rod going out is what's going to hook to another mechanism, which is going to apply our brakes, which is going to push our shoes out into our drum. So I push on a brake pedal, just that rod goes out, then I could use that transporter of motion um, and change it into you know some other rotation to push the shoes out. So a very simple design, just that rubber diaphragm inside there that we saw before. You'll see that all the brake chambers are going to be round, but they're going to be different sizes. The sizes just mean how many square inches are inside. So you'll see on them, they say different types. Like this is a type 18, so that means it's 18 um, inches inside here, the diaphragm. Our brake chamber here, and the one we're going to be tearing apart, is a type 30. It's going to have this diaphragm inside there. So that means it's 30 inches of surface area here, 30 square inches. This one here, brake chamber is a little bit different. You'll find these on, you know, drive axles and non-steerable axles. Um, this one has a built-in parking brake into it, slash emergency brake. So the way that works, there's another diaphragm on this end of it. Now when I push in my other valve here that's normally located on the dash, this PP valve, push-pull valve, when I push this in, it's going to send air pressure to the other side of my brake chamber here, pushing on this diaphragm. And what this diaphragm pushes on is this big spring that's inside there. The spring has 2,000 pounds of force on it. I can't even you know, start to move it together at all. The spring right here is located in this end. You can see that it's you know, more than double in size collapsed inside there. So there's always a lot of tension on there. So you see right now, I can't rotate my brakes at all. If I push in my push-pull knob that's located on my dash, I push that in, you'll see I have air pressure going into this chamber now, whatever the system air pressure is. So I have over 100 PSI in there right now. So what that 100 PSI does, pushes on our diaphragm here, which then pushes on this spring, collapsing that spring inside there. You saw that my rod now sucked in, my slack adjuster pulled back, now I can rotate my brakes. So we use this as a parking brake. We apply air to it to release the parking brake, and if we um, take the air away from it, our parking brake's gonna apply. Watch our little rod come out here when I take the air back out of it. I pull out of my push-pull valve, releasing the air from the brake chamber. Now my brakes are reapplied again. I can't rotate it around anymore. Look at my air line back up here for the other side of the brakes. So when I get into the truck each day, I let it air up the system pressure, which is very important. So our system pressure is going to be between 120 PSI and 135 PSI, depending on the manufacturer, but it needs to be right in that range there. You'll see why here in a second. 
So I get in my truck, I start it up, I let it air all the way up to about 120 to 130 PSI. That's when you're going to hear the noise. That's the um, signal coming from the governor going back to our air dryer, purging our moisture to air out um, that we collected all the moisture and stuff from. We drain the water out of the air dryer and the governor is also sending a signal to our air compressor. At our air compressor it's moving the unloader valves making it so our air compressor doesn't build up air anymore. So we get up to the 120, 135 PSI and we're just going to stay right there until our system you know, starts lowering down to about 90 PSI. Then our governor is going to close back off and it's going to let our air compressor um, build back up to 120 PSI and we'll start the whole system over again. So it's very important that we um, maintain that air pressure inside the tank. Um, you'll see here in a second what happens if we start losing air pressure. But back to the basics of it here, we push in our push-pull valve, call it PP1, push-pull valve number one. So we push it in here, we just released our brakes. So remember, that's just collapsing the spring in the back side of our brake chamber. So now that we're ready to you know, start moving the vehicle, this is going to stay collapsed all the time. There's always air going to this chamber right now. Um, now we still have this other side of the brake chamber. So this other side of the brake chamber works every time we step on the brake pedal. Just like our little tiny one did. We apply air to it, the rod's going to go out. We do the same thing here. We apply air to the front side of the brake chamber now when we push on the pedal. Applies air out, pushing our rod out. We let go of it. There's a spring inside here. We'll see in a minute that just helps push that back. Then there's also springs on the brake shoes that help push them back, which, you know, in turn pulls everything back for us. So you'll see here, every time we push on the brakes, we're going to use an air. You can hear it here. Eventually, we're going to use enough air where our air compressor is going to kick back on. If we have a failure with our air system where we can't build up enough air, or we're using the brakes so much that our air drops down, our air um, alarm and stuff's going to come on on the dash at about 85 psi. There should be a light that comes on that flashes or stays on, or there should be an audible noise also, like a buzzer or some sort of you know beeping alarm. That's going to tell us that we don't have enough air pressure in the system. You'll see here why that's very important. We have that 2,000 pound spring in there that we talked about sitting in here. We have air to it right now collapsing that spring down, taking it off the plunger that's in here, making it so that rod's back in there so the brakes are released. We start to lose air pressure now. I'll shut my air off here. We start to lose air pressure in our parking brake side. So we're starting to lose air pressure. We're down to about 80 PSI now. We were up to 120 PSI. So we're down to 80 PSI. Now our light on our dash is on saying that we need to build up air. Also, um, there's a warning alarm going off. You'll see around 80 PSI, our brake's going to start to apply now. Because now we don't have enough force to hold the spring back anymore. So we have the air pressure, basically pushing on the diaphragm here, collapsing the spring. This was a 30 square inches one, so we have 100 PSI going there. We got 3,000 pounds of force collapsing this 2,000 pound spring, so it's not a problem. We get down below 80 PSI. We, now we don't have um, enough force there anymore. Now we're under 2,000 pounds of force. You know, push it on the spring. This is a 2,000 pound spring. So our spring tension now is going to overcome our air pressure. Start to apply the brakes. So you see here we're at 80 PSI. Our brakes are starting to come out on us now. We're starting to slowly apply. So if we ever got to this stage while we're going down the road or anything, this is where you're going to have to, you know, make a quick decision, you know, to pull off the road, get over on the right-hand side lane, um, get off the highway to a safe spot, because if for some reason we can't build up air right now, and we drop down a little bit farther, you'll see our brakes keep applying more and more as we go. Okay, so now we're down to about 50 PSI. Our brakes are almost all the way applied here, you know, we have probably half the tension off the spring, which is more than enough to you know, slow down the vehicle pretty good. But watch as we drop down a little bit farther here. We drop down between 40 and 30 PSI here. You'll see something else happen. 
So right now our brakes are almost all the way applied. Okay, so you just heard that. What happened is we lost enough air. We got down to about 35 PSI. So this is where the emergency brake system kicks in. So we don't have enough air to collapse the spring anymore. Our brakes were slowly applying. They get down below 35 PSI. Now we have a spring inside our PP valve here. So now that spring inside the PP valve doesn't have enough tension, or the, <laughs> the spring inside the PP valve doesn't have enough pressure being pushed on it with the air now to stay engaged. So now our spring tension is going to overcome our air pressure inside our PP valve too. So at 35 PSI, or around quarter of the system pressure, this PP valve is going to pop out automatically. When that happens, our brakes fully apply, and now we can't move the truck anymore until we build up air again somehow, or mechanically cage these brakes, which we'll see here in a few minutes. So we'll watch that one more time. I'll air up my system here again. I'll push in my PP valve. I'll push in my PP valve, sends air back to the brake chamber, the back side of it, claps in that spring. We got full system pressure. I'm going to shut my air off again. So if for some reason we're not building air, you know, every time we pump the brakes we're going to lose some air. If we have a catastrophic failure, you know, a line breaks off between here and the brake chamber, you know, we're going to lose air. It's going to start applying the brakes. So, go through it here. Do it pretty quick. So, right now we're down to about 60 PSI. Our brakes are about half applied. Get down to about 40. And just set right there. So, we get down that far, it's going to apply automatically. So if we have a you know big catastrophic failure where say our air tanks or something get ripped off right away, this brake chamber, all our back brakes are going to apply instantly all the way on. We won't be able to move. So that's why the alarm and stuff's very important. Um, gives you a warning to get off the road. You don't want to be out on the two-way over in the hammer lane when these brakes apply and then you're stuck there. So one more time, real quick. Apply our air. Release our parking brake. Shut off our air. Just drain this down real quick, simulating a major air loss here. So it doesn't take too much. As soon as we can't uh, maintain the 35 psi in our push pull valve, it's going to just the spring in there is just going to push it all the way out. It'll be the same as pulling it out, you know, when you go to park. So not only do we have a parking brake here, but it's also a built-in redundancy. No emergency brake in case something fails in the air system. Okay, so let's move over to the bench and we'll tear one of these chambers apart and show you what's inside them. Okay, I'm over at the workbench now. We're going to tear apart one of these combination brake chambers here. So remember, the front half of it here is going to be exactly the same as our little one. So the front portion here, exactly the same as our steer axle one. Um, this one's obviously a smaller one, but if we had a, um, a standard truck's going to have the same on front and back. So on the front we'll have like a Type 30 that's just a single um, service brake chamber like this one. And on the drive axles we'll have the combination one like this. So the front portion of this is exactly the same as the front portion of this brake chamber. Nothing different except they put a backing plate on there instead of the back of this brake chamber. But same idea. Set that off to the side. We'll tear this one apart here. So a couple safety precautions we need with this one. So we know we have that 2,000 pound spring inside here. So this big spring is in there all the time. It's just hanging out in there. You can see that this spring is twice as long as this um, chamber that it's confined into here. So what we have to do before we start tearing this apart is take the tension off this spring here. There's a couple different ways of doing it. We can apply air pressure to it and keep the air pressure on it all the time, which is kind of inconvenient and kind of dangerous if something fails on our air system, that spring's going to apply pushing that piston out. So what we do, we use what's called a caging bolt. So this bolt right here is basically going to compress this spring, we'll just screw it down with a wrench, or we can apply air and put our caging bolt in there. So how this works. On the bottom of this spring, the spring just sits on this plate here. So you'll see in this plate there's a slot. There's this, um, a slot in this um, <coughs> So you'll see in this plate there's a slot here 
that looks just like the other end of this here caging bolt. So the caging bolt, you're going to push it down inside there, do a quarter turn, then lift up. What's happening is that caging bolt is now locked into this plate here. So we could tighten this screw down right now, or this nut down right now, and that's going to slowly compress our spring there, taking the tension away. It's going to store all the energy for us in this back part here where it's safely contained. We can't take this back part apart. On older vehicles back in the day, I think before the 80s, they used to put a clamp on both ends of these. So a mechanic underneath the truck accidentally takes off the wrong clamp on here. So if that happens, we got this 2,000 pound spring busting out of there, you know, killing the person. So luckily they changed that for us so we don't have to worry about that um, anymore unless we're working on an older, you know, vintage um, over the road truck. Might still have that clamp on there. If it does have that clamp on there, do not take it off under any circumstances. Okay, even if you cage it ahead of time, it's not worth taking apart. It's not worth having that spring come out at you. It would definitely take your head off. So, like we said, we have this caging bolt. A couple different ways we could do it. We could do it manually, where we put it in there right now. We put our wrench on there. We crank and crank and crank. It cranks really hard, obviously, because we have 2,000 pound spring we're trying to compress. Another way we could do it, if it's a good brake chamber not leaking yet, we can just apply air to it right now. So you'll see when we apply air to it, this rod's going to go in. So you'll see here in a minute, there's actually another spring in this front portion here. So what we do to cage this spring, while our um, spring in the back is still applied out, so our rod's all the way out as far as it can go right now. So what we'll do right now, just take a pair of simple vice grips, we'll clamp on this front rod, and that'll just keep that rod out when we release our parking brake here. So there's a little tiny spring inside there that you'll see here in a minute. Um, all that's doing, the vice grips is just holding that spring on this end caged, um, just so it doesn't bother us. You can do it without taking that off, there's not that much force on there, you know, 5 or 10 pounds of force on that spring not enough to um, hurt you. It's just kind of annoying when you go to assemble and disassemble the stuff. So we got our vice grips clamped on there. We're going to apply air now. Remember we apply air to the back side of the brake chamber where the, you can see the ports are offset a little bit. Front port goes to the service side. The back port goes to the emergency slash parking brake side. So we'll apply air here. So right now we apply air. I heard it go in there. Now my spring inside there just got collapsed. You can see I can see that plate now in the back of the brake chamber through the little hole there. So now I'm going to take my caging bolt, I'm going to put it inside the brake chamber, make sure it's locked down in there good, make sure it's not going to fall out on you. I just tighten this nut down. You only have to go hand tight when you do it this way with the air. If we didn't have air to it right now, we'd have to just crank it down manually. It's a long way to go to collapse this whole spring here. So now I can release the air and my spring here is safely caged inside there where we have all the tension applied to it, keeping it off our piston that we're going to see inside here. So let our air out here. We don't need that right now anymore. Okay, so now we're pretty safe. We got the spring tension taken off the front here. We got the spring tension taken off the back here. So now we can take these bolts off our clamps here. So to do that, all you need is a 916 most of the time, deep socket or a wrench. This is a new chamber, so they come off pretty easy. It's an old rusty chamber. A lot of times you just had to cut these bolts and then replace them. So we take our bolt off, get it out of the way there. We'll loosen our other side up here a ways. We don't have to take this one all the way off, but you can if you want. So now that we have that off, if you have all your tension and stuff released, now you can just lift up on the clamp and take them off. You still have spring tension on the front, just be weary that it might, you know, pop out on you. So now we can just take it apart. Now we got two parts to our brake chamber. We got our back part that has the spring and stuff in it. We have our front portion. You can see the diaphragm inside there. Okay, then you can see our front part of the brake chamber here. Um, you can't see the spring right now, but I'm going to release the um, 
vice grips on here. I'm going to put a little downward pressure on here just to keep that from popping up at me. Okay, so I could take my clevis off the front now if I wanted to. And the jam nut. And nothing to it, so I can just take that out. That's just a you know, standard front cover. All that's in here is just a couple plastic and metal seals here just to keep the big debris from going out through these holes right here. Then I just had my, you know, pretty flimsy spring here. Just my return spring. In here you'll see the rods connected to this plunger part here. So this plunger part is basically to protect the diaphragm here. The diaphragm, you know, is where all our energy is converted here, pushing out on this plate. So we have our 30 square inches at 100 PSI, pushing out on this at 3,000 pounds of force when we're fully applied. So that just pushes out, and when we let the brake pedal off, this return spring here just pushes this plate back, you know, help push the air out of our diaphragm, and, you know, um, release our brakes. You can see the diaphragm here is just a simple piece of rubber. Every time you step on the brakes, this flexes. So this does wear out. So the more we flex it, you know, over time, you're going to start getting a hole inside these. Once you get a hole in there, when you step on the brake pedal, you're going to get an air leak out of here. You see there's a couple holes in here on the other side of where the diaphragm goes. So if we have a hole in our diaphragm, you're going to hear the air start coming out of here. So remember, we have two diaphragms. We have this one here in the service side portion of it. Then we have another diaphragm in this back portion. So, like I said, we can't take the back portion apart anymore. Back in the day, you used to be able to change out the back side, but for safety reasons, we don't do that anymore. So, um, if we have an air leak in the back part, nowadays, we just dispose of this, get a brand new brake chamber, and put on there. You don't have to change out the whole brake chamber. You can just buy this back part. They call it a piggyback. So, you can just buy this back portion and um, reinstall that on there. So, in our back portion, we have one cut apart here. So in our back portion, you'll see another return spring. This just helps push the diaphragm out. Return it. Doesn't really, you know, help release or apply the brakes too much since it's, its own section in there. So the way this works, when I put air down into here, the back side of the brake chamber. Sorry, it's going the wrong way. When I put air down into here, the back side of the brake chamber, puts air into this side here, pushes on our diaphragm. We have our little plate on the diaphragm. We have our spring on there, then our back of our brake chamber. So I put air into there, it collapses the spring here. That's how I release my brakes, my parking brake. Or if I lose all the air pressure out of there as we're going, it's gonna automatically apply my um, emergency brake. So you'll see in there, just another plunger inside there. So when that spring um, pushes out on it to push out our rod, all it's doing is pushing on that right there just pushes that out. You'll see the piston come out the other side there as I push on it. That piston just comes out of there. Now we're back on our service side. That piston pushes out of there and that piston just mechanically pushes on this part over there. So when my parking brake applies, I take out the spring tension and just that spring, you know, pushes out on this here, pushing this rod out applying my brakes. So it's all very simple in there. There's really nothing to this. The only thing we have to watch out for, you know, is this very dangerous spring inside there. So um, when you do take these off, um, don't just throw them in the scrap pile because, you know, you might be in a scrap yard someday, somebody drive over this and it explodes. That spring goes quite a ways. I've been on a couple of truck fires and stuff where I found these like a hundred yards away. You know, the aluminum will melt out and the brake chamber will come apart and you find these, you know, way down the road. So there's quite a bit of force inside there. That's why it's also very important to cage it before we take it out. Because remember, that piston, when we don't have air in there, is pushed out. So all that energy is going into the brake chamber. So if I take the brake chamber apart without pulling um, the cajun bolt in there, that spring's just gonna, you know, push that piston out. And when I take the front cover off my brake chamber, it's gonna, you know, 
um, fling it out at me at 2,000 pounds of force. So definitely don't want to do that. Okay, so let's put this back together here. So pretty simple to return it back together. Move some stuff out of the way here. So I'll just reassemble this part here first. So remember I just had these simple little things here to keep the debris out. That just slides over there. Put my little jam nut on there. Put my little clevis back on there. You can work on these with the clevis and stuff off. It doesn't really change anything. I just like to put them on there. That way I can let go of it and it not fly off at me. So, as you can see, it's kind of annoying having that spring there right now. If I tried to put it together right now to seal it, I'd have to collapse everything together and fight that spring tension. So, all I'm going to do again is apply my vice grips on here. So, I'm just going to push down on this outside, push it down, apply my vice grips on there. Now I got that spring caged in there once again. So, now I just take my um, little diaphragm here, stick it down in here. Kind of only goes one way. Um, after they've been in there for a while, they're kind of a little tricky to line up. You can get new ones, the brand new ones, they slide in there a lot nicer and a lot easier to clamp together. So we'll put our old one back in there. So all we're going to do now, just line everything up, make sure our diaphragm is even all the way around on there. It's a little tricky without using a vise, but so we're going to put some downward tension on it. Put our clamp on there. Make sure our clamp's on both sides of it here, all the way around. For some reason, it's a little cattywampus on there and not lined up good. As you start to tighten it, it's going to pop off on you. Or, worst case scenario, first time you go to press on the brakes, it's going to blow apart on you. So keep a little tension on there until you get the nut back on there. Okay, so now we just tighten them down evenly. Okay, we'll go to the other side, tighten that down a little bit. Just kind of do these with impacts and stuff. Make it a little bit faster. So you want these fairly tight. The tighter you can get them, the less chance of the diaphragm leaking there. But you don't want to go so tight that you're going to snap or bend the bolt. So if you get them both sides you know, pretty snugged up there, then we can release our vice grips here. Okay. So now we got, you know, everything back to normal on this side here. We got our diaphragm good in there. This is now where you would apply air to it, um, to the that side of it. Make sure you didn't have any air leaks in there. If you had any air leaks, then you'd have to do it all over again. So test that side, make sure there's no air leaks. Now we can take our caging bolt back out here. We can do it a couple different ways, like we talked about. We can put our wrench on here. You can see it's very hard to turn it. You have to go a very long ways. It's not here. You basically have to take all the way out to the end, so you'll be there for quite a while. So we're just going to apply air to it again, make it a little faster. Apply air here, taking the tension off that spring. Just loosen up our caging bolt a little bit. Now we can pop it right out. Now we can release our brake chamber air pressure that's in there. We let that rod back out. So that's all there is to the brake chamber there. The biggest thing when you put it back together, um, make sure the diaphragm's nice and clean. Make sure the surface area in here is clean. Make sure there's no you know, cracks or anything in this little lip here. This little lip on this edge here and on the um, front of the brake chamber here is what this little clamp clamps around to hold both pieces together. So they need to be nice and clean and sturdy. So when you clamp it together, it's not gonna get any air leaks out of there. It's just, you know, rubber to metal seal on there.
Okay guys, so that's basically our brake chamber system here. Um, just one last thing I want to talk about when it comes to the brake chamber. Um, they usually add another valve to the system. This is called an anti-compounded valve. So what this does is if I have my parking brake applied, so I got no air in here right now, so that spring's pushing my brakes out, applying my parking brake for me, applying the brakes for me. So I got 2,000 pounds of force in this part. Now, if I stepped on the brake pedal right now, it would put another 3,000 pounds of force over in this side of it. So we're usually used to having, you know, 3,000 pounds of force or so inside here, but now we got 2,000 and 3,000 combined together, so now we have 5,000 pounds of force inside there. Um, it could really damage our system here. So what they do, they put an anti-compounded valve in the system someplace. So whenever I have my parking brake applied, I can't apply my service side to it at the same time. It lets some of the air out so we don't have as much tension going to it back here. That'll protect our uh, rod and stuff here and our slack adjusters that we'll talk about later on. You'll also see whenever I step on my brake pedal, my little brake light comes on here. Brake light is usually just a simple little switch that's ran off the um, brake pedal. It doesn't have to be right on the brake pedal. It could be up in the dash. It could be anywhere in the air system. All that's doing is when I step on the pedal, it just lets air out of this other port inside the pedal. And I just have a little air pressure switch here. It's just a simple switch that's normally open. When I step on the brake pedal, it closes the contacts inside there, completing the circuit, letting my light come on. Okay, so that's pretty much all to it. We'll just recap it real quick. So I hop in my vehicle, I fire it up, I let my system build up to, you know, the system cutoff pressure. It's going to be between 120 and 135 PSI. Uh, my alarm goes off on the dash and my light goes off, you know, about 90 PSI or so, somewhere in there. So I'm all aired up, ready to go. I push in my parking brake, send air to the back side of my brake chamber here, releasing my parking brake. I'm ready to roll down the road. So I'm rolling down the road, you know, I'm getting ready to come up to a stop, I step on my brake pedal. Now air is going from my brake pedal essentially back to here. There's going to be a couple of valves in between that we'll talk about later on. But basically it's just sending air from the here back to another valve that just operates this. So it's the same idea here for our simplification. So I just step on my brake pedal, sends air to the front side of the brake chamber now, pushing out on the rod here applying our brakes for us. An emergency situation, I lose air pressure for some reason, can't build it up anymore, I start losing air out of my system, I get down to less than 80 PSI, my emergency brake starts to apply here, I can't overcome that spring tension anymore, so my brakes are starting to gradually apply nice and slowly, unless it's a major leak. around 50 PSI, my three quarters extended there, um, my brakes are getting ready to apply on me, I get down between you know, 40 and 30, right around 35 PSI, the spring tension in here could no longer um, be held back by the air pressure, so the spring's going to push out, I'm pushing this um, push-pull valve out, and applying my brakes fully for me. So if I get down to about 35 PSI, my brakes are going to apply, and I'm not going to be able to move again until I either air it up or cage all the brakes like we just did over there on the workbench. So my brakes applied. I can't go anywhere now. I'm stuck in the road until you know, a mechanic comes out and fixes the issue. So that's all there is to it, guys. Thanks a lot. Stay safe out there.